So a few people have been asking me how the solar system is performing, any issues I've had or anything, and as you can see there's some scuffing up. So I thought I'd use this video as an opportunity just to talk about a couple of achieving problems and uh, how they're being resolved. Okay, so I think it must have been about nine nine months after the solar install. So the solar install was done in September um, 2018. Made it all through the winter without any problems. Um, and then kind of towards the middle latter part of 2019 had some leaking in the roof. So contact Ferro Green, they came out, um, had a look in the roof and tried to identify where some leaks may have happened from, wasn't really kind of clear. Did some kind of internal patching, but that didn't do the job. Um, so a bit more leaking occurred um, after, so they came up and just kind of put a single scaffolding up, took some panels off in the problem areas, and kind of couldn't see anything obvious, but um, did some additional kind of adjustment because some tiles had moved a little bit, so readjusted those and sorted that out, but unfortunately there was still a little bit of leaking, only a really minute amount now, um, but they decided they would come back, put full scaffolding up, take all of the panels off, um, and you know, try and fix the problem a little bit better. So just gonna pop up there to show you kind of what's happened as best as I can from uh, underneath the panels. On the roof, and there's a wonderful view over some fields and stuff. So don't wanna get into um, some argument or discussion about what isn't or isn't the right way to kind of install uh, panels on the roof because the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned the solar installer makes their choice on what they're doing and then they're responsible for kind of maintaining and supporting it so basically what um, we have here so I have um, slate tiles so you can't just well some people do drill through them but I think it's recommended not to drill through them so you can cut the tiles uh, around kind of the mountain bracket and then you can either do lead flashing or by this kind of plastic colour thing that goes over the tile. So for Evergreen use um, lead flashing that they put underneath the tiles and over um, the brackets and everything to kind of make it watertight and in general they've had no problems but lucky me I have had some problems so they've come back basically what they've done is they took all the panels off and um, took the tiles off again, made sure everything was okay there with the felt and everything, put some lead flashing back, um, and also added some additional lead flashing kind of over the top as well to make even more sure that water flow happens. And then also use this kind of uh, flexi roofing putty, can't remember the name, I'll put the name down below. Um, they do have it in gray and black, but uh, Unfortunately, they used uh, an orange colour, which I'll show you in a moment. So not the end of the world, because you can't see it uh, from uh, down on the ground. Um, to kind of fill in so any additional areas where water may come. So it looks like there's a lot of stuff in there when I'm about to show you now. But that, is, uh, that isn't a hole that they've plugged. It's kind of underneath this additional flashing they've put on on top um, to try and improve it a little bit more. So let me just uh, pop the camera around and see how well you can see that. Okay, so I hope you can kind of see that. So I tried to think about drawing a picture of this, but uh, not a good enough uh, artist, I guess. But um, so just think about that. So you have obviously a roof, then you have roofing felt, then you have the battens, and on these battens is obviously where the tiles normally kind of fit. So on top of those battens, I have kind of two tiles, and then one has a, a bit of a hole cut in it where the, um, the mountain bracket attaches to the batten. Over the top of that is flashing, then the tile goes on top of that. Um, and then they've put some of that kind of roofing putty around that to kind of watertight and air seal it even more than it should be already. Uh, then some additional 
uh, they're flashing over the top of that as well so hopefully it should work and do the job as you won't know until it rains even more but fortuitous or not I'm not sure um, but one of the things that identified um, whilst they're doing the work is so when a few of the panels um, hadn't been put back on yet and there was a break due to bad weather um, they said I could turn the panels uh, back on for a while to try and see if I can generate anything for the day and these three here were all off and um, I'll do a little picture on the side here when I looked at the solar edge it said two of these panels were off and one kind of over there somewhere um, so then when I came back uh, and took some more panels off I did some more tests and basically when they did the install they haven't correctly pos um, well the optimizers are all in certain positions and um, basically how it's referenced on the solar edge tool does not match up so it's not the end of the world it doesn't affect performance too much what it does do is it doesn't help with troubleshooting so if I have a panel failure the system would show that you know one of these panels has stopped working but it might not necessarily be that panel so we did some more tests and um, the uh, basically show there was a few more panels that don't match up as well so like these two uh, M1 up here is actually that one over there in terms of how the system is kind of set up um, so tomorrow morning all the panels will come off again uh, and get the serial numbers of every single optimizer and then again put them in the right order which will again help with the, the troubleshooting so obviously that should have been right um, from the start but at least now it's been identified so as soon as the scuffling is up it's the perfect time to kind of take these off and get them sorted and you can also see that they're dirty and there's bird poo and all sorts of crap on here so whilst I've got the scaffolding up um, I've been thinking about buying a brush that's a telescopic one that would reach from the ground up here um, so I might see if I can order one about £150 though um, to give the panels a good scrub because not until you actually get quite close you can see how kind of dusty uh, they are and look at some of these kind of poo poo stains so I'm sure it's not impacting the system overall, especially not in this uh, crappy weather where they're hardly performing anyway. But especially ahead of the summer, um, be a good idea to kind of get things cleared up. So that's where I am um, with things. So a bit frustrating, it's taken um, quite a few goes to get it fixed and hope, fingers crossed it is fixed. Um, but at least Forever Green have been coming out and obviously then gone to the expense of um, putting scaffolding up and everything to hopefully try and get this rectified uh, properly once and for all. Thanks for watching this video, a thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.